think I'm an ignorant reader. I've been so many places, I guess that isn't so. But still, I cannot see if the illiterate one is me. How can there be so much that you don't know? You don't know. You think you own every book in the kingdom And you claim you've read every single one But I know that physically is impossible We have lives and a spirit and Netflix You think the only readers who are readers Are the people who read and think like you but if you read that smutty romance novel, you'll learn things you never knew, you never knew. Hello, everyone. I'm Natasha, and today we're doing a book haul. My last book haul was in August, but those weren't really books that I had been accumulating for months. Those are like books that publishers had been sending to me. Technically, I haven't really done a book haul since April. 19 books to share with you guys today. It's a pretty decent haul. The first book I wanted to share with you is I Hate Everyone But You by Gabby Dunn and Allison Raskin. St. Martin sent this book to me and they've kindly sponsored this video for me. Thank you so much to them. And I am so happy I read this. I wouldn't normally pick a book like this up. If you guys weren't aware, Gabby Dunn and Allison Raskin are YouTubers. I don't watch their channel. I only knew about them from BEA. I tend to lean towards the adult romance genre. That's where I'm comfortable and like I love to read sci-fi and fantasy. So I rarely ever pick up a high school contemporary. This isn't high school so it's actually their freshman year of college. And I have never read a YouTube book thus far. I'm glad I started with this one because I know that these two women wrote this book because it's them. The main characters in this book are Jen and Ava. Even though the book is basically about their lives going into their freshman year of college. I didn't think much about the authors when I was reading this because I was just so enveloped in this book and I enjoyed myself so much. It's all told through emails and texting, which is not something I typically like to read. I was relating so hard to this. This is me. This book was me. This is how I talk to my best friends who live across the country. It's how I talk to my friend Abby when she went off to her first year of college and I was still in California. Jen goes to Emerson in Boston. Sasha went to Emerson in Boston and like so did Christine. She went to BU, so it was just like really relatable. However, this book does tackle the acceptance and growth of the LGBTQ community. Jen, for instance, doesn't like labels. Ava is trying to understand this about her friend because she's always thought of her friend as heterosexual, and so she's very judgmental on her part. But at the same time, she's unaware and she is not informed and educated about that kind of lifestyle. This book perfectly illustrates how we change from high school into college. And that first year is so rocky because we're just like like thrust into adulthood and trying to keep your best friend from high school. And I hugely struggled with that. All my friends moved away from me, so it was very hard for me to grab on and latch onto new friends. I didn't technically latch onto any new friends until about three years after when I started doing YouTube. I met everyone who had channels here who are my best friends now. I didn't go to college, but I had the same experiences with your friends. This is mainly about friends and growing, just finding who you are. And I really, really enjoy this. I'm I'm so glad I read it. If you guys have gone through that or you're starting your first year in college or you're in college, I highly suggest you read this. The only problem I had with this book, as you can see, there's like emails and there's little icons and they don't have like dates or anything, which I think is a good thing. You just kind of know times when they text. This whole book takes place during the first semester, but it was hard for me to distinguish the names and to remember which girl was which. Which girl was in Emerson, which girl was in California. Like obviously by the end, I finally got it. I had to like creepy bird icon is Ava and weird monster doll is Jen. Remember those. <laughs> it's purely all dialogue, this book. I think this would be an awesome audiobook, by the way. They probably have two actresses playing the two different characters. The dialogue is so witty. There's definitely different parts of each girl that I related to. Like Jen is a super like Marvel geek and she was quoting all like the Marvel movies and I'm like, I just watched all those again so I know where it's from. I love this book. Definitely a five out of five for me. I will 
will link it down below if you want to get yourself a copy. Next, I have, what is this called? What is this called? Collaboration. I have the bind up. Why am I blanking on what this, you know, it's because you love to hate me. All my friends are in it. A bunch of authors like Renee Audier and Susan Dennard and Adam Silvera and they all did short stories and they're all prompted by booktubers and then like the booktubers got to write a little essay at the end and it all has something to do with being evil, it's all about, you know, like the evil characters. Like for instance, Renee and Christine picked Kylo Ren. I'm glad I got my hands on it. Someone mentioned in my live show if I had it and I'm like, actually I don't. So I went out and I bought it. Now I just need everyone to sign it. And I think that's so cool that I could have my friends sign their book that they're involved in. Penguin sent me Looking for Alaska by John Green because I don't own this one. And they're getting ready for John Green's new book, Turtles All the Way Down. And I'm gonna do a giveaway on my Instagram. So check out for that. I'm giving away like three copies. Who's excited for John Green's new book? Me. Even though like I technically never finished Fault in the Stars, I should get on that train. <laughs> Random House sent this to me. Justin Cronin's The Passage. This was like hugely popular in 2010 and I had, whoo, I had been seeing this on the bookshelf and I wasn't too sure if I wanted to read it. This whole summer I've been in like kind of like a weird book slump, but not really because I actually have been reading, but like not the books that I really want to read. You, do you understand? So I asked if they could send it to me. So far I've gotten to page 75. This is becoming a TV show. It's actually a vampire book. I had no idea. It was really creepy at the very beginning of it. It's all about like this post-apocalyptic. Is it post-apocalyptic? I don't know, but like vampires take over because the government agency tried to make super soldiers and they turn into vampires. It doesn't at all seem like vampires. It's like really modern and like FBI type. I don't really want to know any more about it. <gasps> no. Next, I have Sage Alexander and the Hall of Nightmares by Steve Copeland. Over the summer, I got to go to Dallas and we filmed a new talk show. It's kind of like a collab channel with Reagan from Pruitt's Project, Sasha from A Book Utopia, and Tiernan from The Booktuber, and then newbies Ryan and Lauren. We filmed like 12 episodes. <laughs> on as a guest. This is all about the seven princes of hell. Each book follows one prince of hell and Sage Alexander is the one who was foretold to save the human race. I love the concept of this book and I love that there are biblical ties in this story. I would closely relate this to like a Percy Jackson type of book if you're into that. I've never read Percy Jackson. I've always been scared to, to be like I don't like it. Oh look at the naked. I want to get into this just because now that I know the author and I know the story behind it because he actually wrote this for his grandson. If you guys haven't heard or you haven't seen any of the episodes that have been uploading. I think we're about seven episodes in. I had so much fun doing this and this is something that I've been wanting to do or something like it. I don't know. We have a whole production behind us. Today I am in Dallas. I am here with Sasha Tiernan and Reagan. We're doing this fun little new show called Book Chat and I have half my makeup on right now. It's 745 and we're getting ready to go and I thought I'd bring you guys along to show you the experience. Also if you want to check it out yourself. Hi Matilda. And hi, sweetie. Reagan's here. Yeah. Hello. So you just did the first episode. It was How you so feel? much fun. It was so cool. Yeah. It's like so professional. It is. I'm not used to that. I'm used to like my my tripod yeah. that I put up on my on my nightstand because it's not tall enough. Oh my god. Like come on, like this is awesome. I love Gosh, it. She's used to like opening her laptop and like, hey guys, yes. and your webcam. So I just filmed one of my first episodes. Here's one of the sets. There's a kitchen. We got food. Here's the other set. This is a bedroom. <laughs> we got Matilda on the bed. Reagan's being mother hen. We have this set over here. We're all sitting on these chairs. We just got done with the first day of book chat. Woo! Woo! How did we feel about today? I had so much fun. And I'm glad we had energy. I 
after like two hours of sleep, Tasha? <laughs> yeah. Right? We were so high energy yeah. in the morning and I was really excited about that. And then, you know, after lunch, we were all sort of tired, but once but we, we got going again. Yeah, it was, it was good, it was good, yeah. I'm so grateful and it's so much fun. We spent a whole weekend together. It's called Book Chats. I'll link it down below. Every Friday, they upload a new episode and it's like a big collab video every single week. We have a subject that we talk about for about 10, 15 minutes. Then we have a special guest come in and then we play a fun game. I'm actually going back to Dallas to film at the end of September for season two. I'll be doing some more behind the scenes stuff there. Next, I have Kristen Ritter's Bonfire. I got this at BookCon. It was just sitting on a table and I snatched it up. I'm such a fan of Jessica Jones and Kristen Ritter just as a human. I love her dark hair. And I love following her Instagram because she does all like these fun little knitting things. I actually watched the entire panel that she was on and she talked about how she couldn't book anything between Jessica Jones and the Defenders and Jessica Jones season two. So she's like, I'm going to write a book. She ended up pitching an idea to Paper Lanterns, which is run by Lauren Oliver. I don't really know what the book is about. Tightly wound suspense novel about a woman forced to confront her past in the wake of a small town corruption. I think Kristen took from her roots because she grew up in a small town. When I went to the used bookstore, I went with my friend Liz. Vlog coming soon. She made me buy these romance novels. One is The Darkest Night, The Lords of the Underworld series by Jenna Schulter. Showalter. She's a New York Times bestselling author. His powers and human, his passion beyond immortal. All her life, Ashlyn Darrow has been tormented by voices from the past. To end the nightmare, she has come to Budapest, seeking help from men rumored to have supernatural abilities, not knowing she'll be swept into the arms of Maddox, the most dangerous member, a man trapped in a hell of his own. I love romance books, so I'm excited to read this. I usually get these things on Kindle, but I'm excited to read like a real small version of it. It's the mass paperback version. Okay, next is Cressley Cole, A Hunger Like No Other. I remember her talking about it and she said it's very problematic. So I'm going to be aware of that. Cheryl Kenyon blurbed the front and said, a unique romance it truly stands on its own send this on the back it's standing out it says a mythic warrior who will stop at nothing to possess her a vampire captured by her wildest fantasy an all-consuming desire it's a paranormal vampire romance novel next i had to put in zenith this is by sasha osberg and lindsay cummings i got the book at bea and obviously it was in my vlogs so it's the most exciting thing to happen at bea in my opinion and i'm very proud of these two ladies and i can't wait to read this hopefully I'm gonna read it soon thing is i don't know if i'm going to review it though. If I like it, if I don't like it, either way it's going to be taken the wrong way because I will most likely be biased because Sasha is one of my best friends. Just letting so you know this comes out January 16th and you should pre-order it and I'll definitely haul the finished copy once I have it. Next I got this at Comic-Con. This is Dining and Seven Stones to Stand or Fall. This is a collection of Outlander fiction. Diana gathered a collection of short fiction including two never before published novellas all extending the story of Outlander in thrilling new direction. This just came out. If you guys have already blown through all the Outlander novels, then you can read this. I can't yet. I'm still on Drums of Autumn, which is the fourth book. Here you go. It's out. Random House sent me a Game of Thrones, the illustrated edition. I did, I requested this because it's so beautiful. Look at that. Oh, that's for the Lannister, so it's kind of gross. But there's like illustrations and all the pages are so beautiful. Robert Baratheon in this. I was never truly obsessed with Game of Thrones. However, this season, I was really obsessed. I'm glad I have this now so I can read it. And it's so, so, so beautiful. Ha ha This I recently shared in a video, but it is a bind up with Lord of the Rings. We don't own Lord of the Rings in my family. We own The Hobbits, the books. So we all know the movies, the extended versions, obviously. So my brother actually bought this, but I'm just going to show it in the video because I know I will most likely read this at some point in my life. Another book that I got on my used book journey is Beatrice Small, A Dangerous Love. So it's actually New York Times bestselling author of The Last Harris. I've never heard of this author. I thought she kind of looked like me and she has like a tartan shawl and it looks to be like a medieval type of book. Orphaned by England's War of the Roses, betrayed by her half-sisters, Elizabeth of York, Adair Radcliffe, is taken captive during a border raid and sold into servitude to Colonel Bruce, the Laird of Clayt. This just sounds like, you know, the typical tropes that I like to read, so I picked it up. And it was actually in pretty good condition, too. It was only $3.95. Random House sent me because I requested it. It's Waking Gods by Sylvan Nouvel. I have a friend who works at Random House, so I just was like, can you send me this book? I would have technically never have read Sleeping Gods if they hadn't have sent it to me like two years ago. But this is the second book to the Sleeping Gods series trilogy. I think it's a trilogy and I just finished it and it's so, so good. I listened to the audiobooks. I don't actually technically read it just because now I'm like obsessed with the actors who play the roles, like who voice the roles. It's all told in like interview style. I've never 
never like actually read along to it. I wonder how that would be. It's sci-fi. The first book centers around this robot and they're trying to find the pieces all around the world and they create the robot. They put it all together and then they have to find people to pilot it. The second book is super intense. It's so good. The first book is really good. This book is I think more fun but also like extremely devastating things happen. If you guys like Red Rising, if you guys like Star Trek, read it. At these bookstore I picked up a copy of Gone with the Wind. My mom owns her copy of Gone with the Wind. I wanted my copy and I've never read this before and I really want to read it because it's my mom and my grandma's favorite book. It's not as pretty as my mom's. At least I don't think so but it's still pretty and it was only $9.50. Another romance book! So this summer I read so many romances it's not even funny. After I moved and after all the events the last thing I really wanted to do was like dive head first into to like a world building book and after I read A Court of Wings and Ruin like I was put into a book slump. So I picked up this Sins of the House of Borgia by Sarah Bauer. I just thought the cover was really pretty. A notorious duke, an infamous duchess, an innocent girl. What readers are saying? Glittering, gorgeous, compelling, and stunning. A richly satisfying historical novel. It deserves prizes. Cool. It's actually pretty big for like a romance novel. Family romance. <laughs> so this is one of the romance novels that like I loved. So this is Christina Lauren's Dating You, Hating You. I read this right in between BEA and VidCon. I finished it at VidCon. I really like this book because it has my favorite trope in it with people hating each other. It's not really, they don't really hate each other. They actually like each other first. It's really confusing. So Christina Lauren, they're two authors. They wrote my favorite fan fiction back in the day, Twilight Fan Fiction, which is now Beautiful Bastards. It was called The Office. They have some really, really good books coming out like Autobiography and they have like this new book called called The Roommate or something coming out. I'm very excited about both of those. But this was the first book that I've read outside of their Beautiful Bastard series. What I really loved about this book is that it's set in LA and it's about two agents, like film actor agents. And it's all in like that film world and like I know what they're talking about. They bring up all the problems about sexism in the office and it was just good. Like this is a good romance. I really enjoyed it. You should read it. Oh, I got Test of the D'Urbervilles by Thomas Hardy. So I thought this edition was very cool and it came in this like cool box and I can be like all you know proper with my classics as you can see except for slammed right there but this is like my classic section. I've read all the Jane Austen books. I've read Jane Eyre and Little Women and the Green Gables because of Ostentatious and that book club which you guys should totally follow. We're reading The Hobbit this next for the next two months. You know I'm feeling very like advantageous. So this was 12 bucks at the used bookstore. It's just really pretty. There's some illustrations in it. That is my haul for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was quite different. A lot of different mixes of things lots of romance thank you all so much for watching don't forget about book chat go check it out i'll link it down below please go check it out it's so much fun and i'm so proud of the whole thing and then i'm also going to be at new york comic con thursday there's a panel with me sasha christine kat and jesse those are all the fall events that i'm going to i'm going to be done traveling i'm traveling for four weeks straight so pray for me thank you all so much for watching i'm natasha i'll see you all in the future keep calm and fangirl on bye